Hello everyone. Good evening. Uh, I hope you can hear me and also can view my screen. If I am audible and if the screen is visible, someone please let me know in the chat, then I will proceed. Okay, thanks. So this is the third week of our tutorial session and today we will also look at some problems. I am Devojit, I am a PhD student in the Department of Physics of ID Kanpur and this is the third tutorial session of calculus of one real variable. Okay, so let us see the problems. So the first problem is let f g any two real value differentiable functions and h is f composite then for any a x belonging to r h prime x is given by this. So we have to check whether this is, this is true or false. So and h is f o g which means h of x is f of g of x then we know d d x of h x which is denoted by this notation h prime x this can be calculated as So we can use the chain rule here the first term will be then and the second term will be so this is equal to h prime x and the expression given in the question was and if you compare them you will see that clearly they do not match so they are not same. So this is false and this is the correct option. Yeah, uh, my screen is visible now, right? So for the first problem, this expression is not correct. The correct expression is this one. So can anyone guess for what age which definition of age will satisfy this expression can anyone guess
okay now uh, since no one is answering i will answer it so we can assume a function let's say k of x which is g composite or we can write it like g of f of x and in that case k prime x will be g prime f x times f prime x so the expression on the right hand side which was given in the question is actually valid for g o f not f o g so for this question the statement is wrong okay i hope uh, you all have understood how i have done this problem if you have any question you can let me know i will wait a few moments for the questions you can either unmute yourself and ask me or you can type it in the chat box and after that i'll move on to the second problem Am I audible, guys? Okay, I think uh, no one has any questions about problem number one. Then I will move to the second problem. Okay, so here we are given a function fx equal to root of x minus 1 times 2 minus x for x belonging to 2 comma 0 in a closed interval and then the question asks to tell whether fx satisfies the hypothesis of Rose theorem or not. So I have already plotted this function here. So thus the all the plottings that I will show today is done in the Desmos graphing calculator. So this is our fx. This is the extreme point of this domain 0 and here it is 2 and you can see that uh, see from this plot that in this region between 0 and 1 this function is not defined and you can also check it by putting a value of say x equal to 0 0.5 which actually is from the domain but if we try to find f of x we will find that it is 0 0.5 minus 1 times 2 minus 0 0.5 so this becomes a negative number because uh, it, this will be minus 0 0.5 so fx is not defined for any value of x belonging to this region. So let me write it clearly. So for this excess the function is not defined so since the function is not defined in the whole interval in the whole domain Rose theorem does not apply.
so false will be the correct option here now in the last week's assignment we did a similar problem where the function given was suppose gx the function given was x minus 1 1 over x minus 1 times 2 minus x and the question was exactly same whether Rolle's theorem is applicable or not and we find that there was a special interval in which Rolle's theorem is variable so let us see if we can do a similar analysis for this function also so let us take the ax which is in this region that is x belonging to 1 comma 2 now let us see whether the Rolle's theorem will be applicable in this region or not so this was last week problem uh, which is assignment 2 now for our original problem here fx equal to x comma 1 times 2 minus x we are modifying the domain to be 1 to 2 in closed interval now is Rolle's theorem applicable here so let us check the first conditions whether at x equal to 1 and, and at x equal to 2 the function is defined and you will find that for both these values the function gives a value of 0 so the function is well defined now we have to find two points where the function has exactly same value and if we look at the plot we will see that there exist many pairs of such points for example x equal to this and this will give the same y value similarly x equal to this and this will give the same y value similarly like this and so two points where the function has same value and they exist now the theorem states that we will find the stationary point in between the, those two points. These two points are defined here. okay so again see the function the stationary points mean that the first derivative will be 0 and we can see in between each pair of these points there exist a point here where the first derivative is 0 which will be at x equal to 1.5 we did a similar problem of calculating the derivative and equating it with 0 to find for which x the derivative becomes 0 and we will always find that for x equal to 1.5 this is 0 and for any point pair of point x equal to 1.5 minus epsilon and x2 equal to 1.5 plus epsilon where epsilon is greater than 0 we will find that fx1 is equal to 
fx2 for this pair of point. So, Rose theorem is applicable for this domain. For this domain. Okay. So, for the given problem, the answer will be false, but if we modify the domain to be 1 to 2, then Rose theorem will be applicable. So, that was problem number 2. Uh, do anyone have any question about that? If you have any doubt, please let me know in the chat or unmute yourself and you can speak. Okay, I think uh, everybody understood everything. Then I will move to the next problem, which is problem number three. Uh, yes, did anybody say anything? Okay, so problem number three states that we are given a function f of t e to the power this t square then seventh root and we have to find the derivative of this function at t equal to 1. So, the function is plotted here. So, this is f t and we have to find the derivative somewhere in this position. So, the plot of the function is not really necessary here, but still I have included it. You can look at this function. Okay. So, let us calculate the derivative then. So, we can rewrite the function like this and f prime t will be ddt of f t or it will be ddt of e to the power t square by 7 and we can use the chain rule here and write it like this. Okay, so the first term will be exactly same because we are differentiating an exponential function that gives the exponential function and the second term will be this. So, f prime t will be 2 over 7 times e to the power t to the power 2, 2 by 7 times t to the power minus 5 by 7. So, this is the derivative and t equal to 1, this will be 2 times 7 e to the power 1 times 1. So, this will be just 2e by 7. t equal to 1. So, so, this is the answer here. And if you look at the options, you will see that the second option is the correct one. Okay. So, is this okay with all of you? If you have any doubt, you can ask me. Okay, I think it is okay for everyone. Then I will proceed to the next problem, which is problem number four. Uh, by the way, if you have any question at any point, you can just type it in the chat box or 
uh, unmute yourself and ask okay so for the next problem we are again given a function which is fx equal to cos x and then we have another function gx which is given by f of x fx so how will gx look it will be x cos x or cos of x cos x so this is the functional form of gf and we have to find this quantity which is the first derivative of g at x equal to pi by 2 so let us do that we have already seen how to apply chain rule so i will just do it quickly here Okay, so this is the value of g prime x. Now, for x equal to pi by 2, this function will take the value sine of pi by 2, cos pi by 2 is 0, minus pi by 2, sine pi by 2 is 1, and again cos pi by 2 is 0. So, this will be sin 0. So, the whole thing will be 0. So, this is the answer. So, the option 4 is the correct answer option so any doubt in question number four okay i think this is okay with everyone then i'll move to the next problem which is question number five So here we are again given a function fx defined as x sin x in the region minus pi by 2 to pi by 2. Then the values of c belonging to open interval minus pi by 2 to pi by 2 such that f prime c is 0. So our function is fx equal to x sin x and we have to find f prime x equal to 0 for values of x in the region this will be open interval minus pi by 2 to pi by 2 okay so what will be f prime x here this will be x cos x plus sin x so if we put it to 0 we will get 
माइनस साइन एक्स कॉस एक्स इक्वल टू माइनस साइन एक्स और टेन एक्स इक्वल टू माइनस एक्स सो दिस इज अक्वेशन विच यू नीड टू सॉल्व इन ऑर्डर टू गेट द वैल्यूज ऑफ एक्स फॉर विच द फर्स्ट डेरिवेटिव ऑफ दिस फंक्शन एफ एक्स डिफाइंड हियर इज गोइंग टू बी जीरो सो so this equation will be solved in a graphical way so here in green i have plotted the function tan x and in this violet color i have plotted minus x now the region where tan x is equal to minus x is where these functions are intersecting so this point this point this point this point this point and it will go on so because the domain of this tan x function is large but the function that we are given fx is defined in only this region minus pi by 2 to pi by 2 so what's that region we know that at pi by 2 tan x blows up so this is our x equal to pi by 2 point and this is our x equal to minus pi by 2 point so this is the region where our function is defined and in between this region we have to find one point where tan x and minus x these two curves are intersecting and we have one point at x equal to 0 here so let me mark it with a different color so one solution to this equation is x equal to 0 and as we know 0 is in the region so it satisfies the criteria where we have to find the derivative of this function to be 0 so c equal to 0 is the correct option and you can also see that in the given domain there is only one solution and this other values pi by 4 and minus pi by 4 although they exist in this region they does not satisfy this equation so they are not the solution so this is not true this is not true and clearly the solution exists so does not exist is also not true okay so this is our fifth problem I guess if anyone has any doubt please let me know so we are done with five problems and uh, five more are remaining so if you have any doubt in all the five problems that I have done you can ask me and then I'll move to the next section. Okay, I think there is no doubt for anyone. So I'll move to the next problem. Okay, so here we are given a function fx as log of mod sine x. Then we have to find fx is differentiable in the interval. So I, we have to find in which of this interval fx is differentiable. So let us first look at the function 
if x is ln sin x and ln is nothing but equivalent to log base e this we know already so here on the top plot here i have plotted the function sin x so this we know is bound between 1 to minus 1 and the x can have any value here so now what will be the functional form of mod sin x so this is plotted in the second plot here the blue curve is mod sin x and you can see whenever the red one is the sin x we know that mod x is defined as x when x is greater than 0 or minus x when x is less than 0. So, whenever the sin x has a value of negative, it is getting positive because we are applying the mod function. So, the graph will be like this. Now, we are applying the ln function on this and we know the domain of this function is x positive and x equal to 0 is not included here. So, x cannot have a value of 0 otherwise this function will blow up. So, we have plotted the final fun functional form here which is ln of mod sin x and we can see there are many points where the function is diverging. Why? Because sin x is 0 for x equal to n pi where n belongs to a set of integers. Similarly, mod sin x will also be 0 for x equal to n pi. Right. So, for this set of values where mod sin x is equal to 0, the log of mod sin x will not be defined and for those values, we will not find a differentiable form of the function. So, the function will not be differentiable for these points. So, let me write out the points. So, this will be x equal to 0 plus minus pi plus minus 2 pi and so on. So, for this set of values of x, the function ln will not be defined. So, here this is x equal to 0, this is x equal to pi, you can see it is very close to 3.14, here it is x equal to minus pi. So, I have plotted only 3 values and if we expand the graph, we will find the other values also. So, now we will tackle the problem. So, let us first check from the bottom. So, f is differentiable on r. that is clearly not true because there are many points on R 0 plus minus pi plus minus 2 pi where f is not differentiable. Also f is differentiable on R minus 0 if we exclude the point 0. Then also there exist points like x equal to pi minus pi where the function is not differentiable. So, this is also incorrect. Now in this region minus pi by 2 to pi by 2. This is also incorrect because here x equal to 0 belongs to this region 
where the function is also not differentiable. Now we are left with only the first option, which I will tell now that it is the correct option and I will explain why here. So, the function ln sin x is differentiable here. Why? Because this does not include any of these points. So, x equal to n pi or n belonging to z does not belong to this interval and you can see and you can see here that for n equal to 0, this 0 is excluded here. Okay, sorry, I accidentally removed something. So, these two are open intervals. So, x equal to 0 is not included. Similarly, x equal to pi minus pi, those are also not included. So, this is the correct answer. So, does anybody have any question for this problem? I think I lost connectivity for a moment. Uh, have you, uh, were you able to see the solution of this problem number 6? So, here the first option is the correct one because the points x equal to 0 plus minus pi plus minus 2 pi, basically the points x equal to n pi for n integer is not included in this region. So, in this interval, the function f x equal to ln mod sin x is differentiable. In the other regions, they contain some of these points where the function is not differentiable. So, these are incorrect options. So, is it okay with everyone? Then I will move to the next problem. Okay, so let us go to problem number 7 then. So, here again have one function f x equal to x square minus 2 or x belonging to, to the set of r and we have to find a critical point of f. So, what is a critical point? It is a point where the first derivative is 0, right, or where the function is not defined, but here since the function is defined everywhere, the critical point will be given by where f x, the first derivative of f is 0. So, let us quickly do that. This is a very easy function f x equal to x square minus 2 then d d x of f x is equal to 2 x and this equal to 0 will imply x equal to 0. So, x equal to 0 is a critical point to the function f which is defined here. So, the first option is the correct option. So, everybody okay with the solution?
if you have any questions then you can ask me otherwise i'll move to the next problem okay then let us move to the problem number eight so here also we are given a function x square minus x and we have to find the point x where the function tends mean value and we can easily tackle this problem using the mean value theorem which states that for a function like this which is defined in the interval say a to b then for two points x1 and x2 belonging to this region the mean value of the function will be equal to the derivative of uh, the, the derivative calculated calculated at another point x3 where x3 belongs to this subset and here we have assumed that x1 is greater x2 is greater than x1 okay so what is the mean value of the function that is given by the LHS. Right. So, what will be the derivative of this function for our case? This will be 2x minus 1 because the function is x square minus x. So, the derivative will be 2x minus 1. And the function is zero uh, defined in zero comma two here. So if you took the whole domain, then the mean value will be obtained by taking x equal to zero and x one equal to zero and x two equal to two. So mean value will be. f of 0, f of 2 by 0 minus 2 or 0 minus 2 by minus 2 equal to 1. So, the mean value of this function is 1. So, if we equate this to LHS and RHS, we will find that 2x minus 1 is equal to 1. So, we find that x equal to 2 or x equal to 1. So, this is the point where the function attains its mean value. Okay, so uh, any questions about that? Okay, I forgot to write here that this is the correct answer. Okay, since there are no questions, I will move to the next problem, which is the number. 9. So, here we are again given a function 
f x equal to x square times x square minus 4 and we have to find the local minima or maxima. So, the function is defined here and just by plotting out the function we can see that x equal to 0 is a maxima and these two points are minima. But let us do this systematically. So, we know minima is defined by two conditions. The first derivative will be 0 and the second derivative will be greater than 0. Similarly, maxima is defined with these two conditions. Here the second derivative has to be less than 0 mm -hmm. and uh, we have to check for both these conditions. So, both have to be valid. So, now quickly check what are the points of this function where the first derivative is 0. This will imply x square times 2x plus x square minus 4 times 2x equal to 0. So, x times or 2x times x square plus x square minus 4 equal to 0 or 4x times x square minus 2 is equal to 0. So, the solutions are either x is equal to 0 or x is equal to plus minus root 2. So, one of the points we have already found here x is equal to 0 and this point is minus root 2 and this point is plus root 2. Now, let us calculate the second derivative also. So, our idea is to find the value of the second derivative at these points. to check whether they are greater than 0 or less than 0 and then we can comment on whether the point is minima or a maxima. So, this will be 4x times 2x, uh, we are using from the LHS of this expression, this is f prime x. So, 4x times 2x plus x square minus 2 times 4. Okay. So, this become 8 x square plus 4 x square minus 8 or or 12x square minus 8. So, now let us check for x equal to 0. We will find that f double prime 0 is minus 8 and x equal to plus minus root 2 f double prime plus minus root 2 is 24 minus 8 that is 16. So, since this is less than 0, then x equal to 0 point will be a maxima and this is greater than 0 that means these two points will be 
minima. Now let us see the plot here and we have obtained it correctly that x equal to 0 is maxima and x equal to plus minus root 2 are minima. So now let us check the options also. The first option says that x0 is a local maxima. So this is correct. x0 is a local minima. That is incorrect. x equal to root 2 is a local maxima. That is also incorrect. And x equal to minus root 2 is a local maxima. That is also incorrect. So this is the only correct option. Okay. So we are done with the ninth problem of today. So, anyone have any questions here? If there are no questions, I will move to the last problem of today. Okay, I think there are no questions. So, let's go to the last problem. So, here we are given a function f x equal to x square minus x plus 1 and in the interval minus 1 to 0 we have to find whether the function is increasing or decreasing. So minus 1 will be someone here somewhere here. So and 0 is here. So but just by looking at the plot so this is the plot of fx equal to x square minus x plus 1 and just by looking at the plot we can see that in this region the function is strictly decreasing or decreasing uh, following the nomenclature of this course. So this is decreasing. So just by looking at the plot we can comment that this is the correct answer. and the other ones are not correct. So for this function this was very easy to see how they this was very easy to plot them or and uh, look at the interval but there can be other functions which are not easy to plot and you have to take help of uh, plotting libraries but uh, without plotting them also we can comment on whether the function is increasing in an interval or decreasing by following some standard checks. So let us do that also for this case. So fx is this and let us look at the value of the derivative of this function which is 2x minus 1. Now let us consider the two cases. one where the derivative is less than zero and one where the derivative is greater than zero. So what does this to mean? This to mean that when the derivative is less than zero that means x will increase in such a way I mean x will increase and the function will change in the opposite way. The function will decrease when x is increasing. So this is the definition of a decreasing function. Similarly, so this is the case for decreasing function. Similarly, this is the case for increase in function and this analogous definition can be found in the lectures. So let us check for which values of x this holds true. So 2x minus 1 is less than 0. So 2x is less than 1 or x is less than half. Similarly here 2x minus 1 is greater than 0 and we can easily comment that x is greater than half. Now what about the other possibility if x prime is equal to 0 then this is a 
constant function neither decreasing or not in increasing so now let us see the given interval here minus 1 to 0 so the given interval is minus 1 to 0 and we can see that every point x belonging to minus 1 to 0 is less than half so this intervals minus 1 to 0 is actually lying in this region so from that also we can comment that the function is strictly decreasing This interval is a subset of the region where x is less than half, x belonging to r such that x is less than half. Okay, so let us write the answer here then in the interval minus 1 comma 0 the function f x equal to x square minus x plus 1 is decreasing. Okay, so this is the last problem of today. Uh, do anyone have any questions? Okay, so the first problem, sure I can repeat it. I have already written it out. So I will just go through what I have written and you let me know if it is, that is okay with you. So the first problem is if g are two real value differentiable functions and h is f o g then for any x belonging to r. So the functions are differentiable everywhere. We have to check whether h prime x is given by this expression or not. So we can write h f o g as h x equal to f g of x then if we differentiate it and use the chain rule we will find that h prime x is actually given by this we can follow this one and h prime x will be given by f prime g of x times g prime x so there is a prime here and this expression does not match with the expression given here so this statement is actually false but had the function be uh, like defined like g o f instead of f o g then if we do the derivative for example i will do the derivative of k prime x here where k prime x k x is defined as g o f in the actual function in the actual problem a g is defined as sorry f o g okay so that is incorrect and if we check this one just for a um, check we will find that this is nothing but g prime f x times d d x of f x which is equal to times f prime x. So, the derivative of g o f matches with the expression given. So, this was uh, probably a tricky question. So, that is why I wanted to explore the other possibility also okay so 
uh, is this okay with you or do you want me to explain any further and by the way the recorded lectures will be shared and you can go to the nptl uh, page of this course and there will be a um, link for uh, recorded lectures then you can access this lectures also and the lecture notes where the i have solved the problems is also given in the video links so this will be uploaded in youtube you can see it anytime okay okay shashi Kant, uh, is asking there is a request that kindly say different live session timings for different classes actually there is another sessions for linear algebra class happening right now at the same time so it's difficult to join both sessions simultaneously i know we may not be capable of changing the time but i request that kindly there is a issue in the in between the sessions yeah. um yeah okay uh, i changing the time is not in our hand so i cannot change it so we have to uh, we, we are given the option to choose a time slot uh, before the course began and we whatever we have chosen we have to we are told that you have to stick with that so if you have if all of you have different uh, courses at a given time then you can mail in ptl and see if they can do anything about it otherwise i uh, i can give you two options so one is uh, i am not the only ta who is doing these tutorial sessions there is another TA who is doing this on Fridays. So you can check his videos if you are free at Friday. Otherwise, both of our lectures will be recorded and uploaded to YouTube. Those links will are made available to you by NPTEL. Uh, you are given a, a general mail about the session about this. So you can check the recorded video also. So not five days, uh, Friday. Friday. So I think it is uh, five to six or seven to eight. I I don't remember actually. I have to check. So uh, you will get an automated mail every Friday that there is a tutorial session. So you can the meeting joining link will be given there also. So you can join that, and otherwise you can find the uh, recorded lectures. And the last thing is you can also raise questions if the, on the forum if you cannot join any of the sessions and then raise questions on the forum. I think uh, any one of uh, the TAs or the other course instructor, he will check this and uh, reply to your queries if that is the possibilities that I can think of now. Okay, so recorded video. You can go... So there was one mail. Uh, just hold on, hold on for a few seconds. I will give you the link. So this is the link you can also find it in the course page so yeah in the left option well in the left uh, there will be a uh, like uh, the all the weeks will be tabulated week one week two week uh, three and at the end there will be a tutorial session or problem solving session this kind of title and if you go to that if you click that link you will be given this uh, uh, spreadsheet where that link to this uh, note notes and the the problem solving notes and also the recorded videos are given so you can just follow that yeah okay sure sure if there is any review then we can ask it 
I think this is also the first time that uh, this kind of initiative is being done in a central way. So there might be some adjustment that we can do in the next run also. Okay, so if it is okay with all of you, then I would like to end today's session and we will meet again in the Tuesday of next week. So bye for today.